Last year, I decided to see how much stuff for solar panel projects can I get for free from companies. And I ended up with a lot of batteries, but not a whole lot else. And getting inverters, it was just such a pain. They really didn't want to get rid of them because they, you know, they, they, they didn't make as much money from selling those. The battery market was really, they were able to make those for 25 bucks and sell them for 125 bucks probably. Well, pretty much all the offers from companies have dried up due to the, the political climate and uh, China, US tensions. And whenever Lie Time came out of the blue and offered me anything on their store, I, uh, I was like, I really want that inverter. Really, really want that inverter. And they actually sent it. I've asked them so many times. So here's the rundown. I had this building, access to this building uh, years ago, but the neighbors were using it for storage and my workshop was in the other building. But I decided to put some, some solar panels on the roof and have an MPPT charge controller on the wall. And doing reviews, I was charging up these big 200 amp hour batteries, taking it back to our apartment and running our apartment off of them. But now I want to run this workshop since I, I have my workshop here now. And I want to have this running table saws and all sorts of things, the lights, for instance. Now, one thing I want to gauge this based on is my gold standard, my favorite inverter. And I'm glad this won't have to be the workshop inverter because I want to clean this thing back up again and have it at our apartment because I, I just, I really like this thing. Plus, this has really high efficiency whenever it's just idling. It only takes like four watts of power. One thing I want to check is I want to, I want to get some Anderson plugs under this. And I want to see, when it's idling, how much power does this take? And then also, surprise, surprise, I am the proud owner of a brand new oscilloscope. And that one was not a... Uh, a, com uh, a company promotion that was a purchase and let's see let's check the uh the output of this i'm excited i am so glad that before that roof failure just messed up everything with my solar panels it looks like i did charge up these batteries so we do have full charge batteries i, I actually rather like how this connects in because uh, inverters have a bad tendency of just having two bolts right next to each other. I do wish that this was flipped around, but I understand why they do that. So the batteries are 13.35 volts. Let's turn it on. Let's turn it on. How do you turn it on? Unless you have to use, you have to use the um, control panel. Maybe. Oh, there's a teeny tiny button on the front. <clears throat> I didn't even see that. Teeny tiny. Looks like they've gotten their efficiency down really well. That, that's a really good idle, idle current. Effectively, just a tiny panel like this 15 watt panel would be all that would be sacrificed of the, the capacity towards the inverter. Whenever I build a solar panel system, I like to think about how the capacity of the solar panels, how much gets used up in cable heating and the inefficiencies of the inverter. For instance, if I had this running back at our apartment where we only have a panel about that size, it would be chewing up like half the power ever, ever built by that. But with a big panel system, that's nothing. And this would be pretty good for that, especially if I'm going to be turning this on and off and we'll have this running overnight. I may get to a point, though, where I'm running Bitcoin farmers or something just to, just to put the energy to good use. And I might actually be running this overnight, though. But still, 7 watts isn't a big issue. I am curious, though, about how the power output, what the efficiency is. Well, guys, it got really hot today in the 90s Fahrenheit. And uh, couldn't really do a whole lot in the shop. But I tried to find a 100 times probe 
to use my new oscilloscope on this. And turns out I only have 10 times probes. Back in Illinois, I, I guess I bought a 100 times probe and lost it. It might be in my barn back in Illinois. We didn't pick it up. I went digging and found all the probes I had and they're all, they're all 10 times. But I wonder, this might not be as scientific. I could measure it through a variac. Does that seem to make much sense? I mean, one times, it could do, nah, it, it'll max out about 30 volts. I wouldn't want to go much higher. And I do not want to fry this oscilloscope. But I did go back home and get my watt meter so we can measure both ends of this thing. Now this is pretty cool. I plugged in the remote control and it's showing the battery voltage, showing output, all sorts of stuff. Well, this is cool. We can also check if the watt measurement is accurate relative to, well, honestly, the less expensive watt meter. Mm. Oh yeah, you love my very dangerous probe setup. Oh. The most power hungry appliance that I have is this air fryer. So let's plug in this air fryer and see how much the input and output, the conversion efficiency is on this inverter. Gosh, even this fan jacket isn't enough today. Thankfully the sun's going down now. Output is on. We have power. Let's turn this on. Bake. Okay, 1151 watts, pretty even, 1460 watts, oh this is going down, yeah I think the, uh, we're pulling too much power. Maybe we'll go with something that's a little more chill. I, have, I decided to grab the thermal camera. Yep, pretty warm just from that little bit. And it's been like 45 seconds. I definitely want to use the enclosed cables because they're much, much thicker. This little current sensing setup, it's not meant for pulling this much power. I definitely love the heat out. Let's see how much power this 1980s R12 dehumidifier takes. Oh. Obviously, all the things I keep picking take too much power. So in that case, it stalled it because of the thin wires. So let's do something a little lower power. Hundred nine volts. Let's check the the voltage. Seventy five point two watts. That's interesting. That's a discrepancy. Eighty-two, eighty-five watts. It's something like oh, eighty-five percent efficient, which is what you would expect for the lower end of things. I know this will probably get some people into that debate about if we have one twenty volt or one ten volt. 
but you know if you grow up in a place very very far from a power plant or power transformer you'll end up with 105 volts 109 volts this is 110 volts that's a bit low I would have wanted 120 but well let's see if that changes as we turn this off It didn't change at all. It went from 110.1 to 110.3. So the load is no different. It seems like they're playing it safe by going to 110 volts, which is more of a matter of choice. Some things will have a little bit less power, but that might be good. Now let's get the thick cables on there and let's see how it can handle the high current. I won't be able to sense the current though because I don't have one of those loop meters. Now I don't know if you're supposed to use them all at once, but I used both wires doubled up because that seemed like a good idea. Now the high current load. Look at that. Working great. Went down to 109.8, 109.5, 460 watts now. When it stalled before, it went up to uh, 2,000 watts because it was shorting out. 352 watts on this meter, 460 watts on that meter. I'm curious which one is accurate. Let me know what you think about these meters, how accurate they are. Now, of course, I can't actually test these, but I can't test the current here. No heat whatsoever here. That battery is rated for 200 amps, so that should be good. Very nice. I'm tempted to turn this into a chiller for my laboratory experiments. I know I already have a chiller, but I really like this little dehumidifier. Isn't that just the cutest thing ever? Okay, that is pretty good. I just realized that all three of my Variax are at the apartment and I don't feel like going and, get and getting them today. That's a shame. I also didn't think that the Variac method would be a very good way to measure the sine wave. I know on my on my Renault's Big Projects channel, I, I had shown the the, the waveform of uh, of that other. No, no, no. It was a 24 volt one, one that I had got, but I can't find where that thing went. I've searched the barn twice when I've gone to Illinois. Can't find that thing anywhere. Well, I guess maybe my 100 times probe is over there too. This seems like there's really no, really no reason to doubt the waveform on this. Okay. Humidity has gone down a lot because it's such a warm day today, so it's not really doing a whole lot. Well, guys, that was a quick little look at the Lifetime 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter. There's not a whole lot for me to really talk about this early on, but I, I get it. They wanted me to post a video about it. And seems like they did a really good job with it. I'm gonna use this to run my entire workshop. At the moment, I have a lot of, I, well, I've been really busy fixing things at restaurants, doing all sorts of things. And it's, it's like 20 things a week. 
and I make a little bit of money here, a little bit of money there. I think I'm mostly caught up on a lot of stuff and I can enjoy the shop a little bit and I can work on these things. And I think this Lifetime 3000 Watt Inverter, gotta say it, gotta say it twice, Lifetime 3000 Watt Inverter, send me another one, please. No, it's okay, I have enough inverters now, now that I have this. Um, I'm probably going to uh, mount it to the wall, similar to the other uh, charge controller. And I may pilfer another one of those three-phase connectors. Oh, actually, you know what? It's a three-phase connector. I only use two poles of it to switch the solar, so I can use the other pole to turn this on. So whenever I have the solar turned on, this is connected as well. That might end up backfiring, backfiring in the future, but we'll see. I, I would just like to be able to use a circuit breaker to actually switch this. And uh, it'd be nice to have it on the wall. Well, that's pretty much it for now. I'm wanting to be doing Solar Sunday series, but, you know, I can't really start with the inverter. I have to start with the solar panels and well, cleaning off the batteries because the roof debris is still on the batteries. And uh, I'm getting the, the shop organized pretty well. I've got a lot of merchandise to sell. So when people come to me wanting fans, air fryers, dehumidifiers, I, uh, my rule of thumb, I think, is for some of these things, which people generally need, I'll keep two of everything. And uh, like I have two fans, I have two dehumidifiers. Some things like the wood chipper, eh, it's, it's days are numbered because the engine, I wanna do stuff with the engine and I cut up the metal and use the metal for stuff. And I could use the wheels for a cart and stuff like that. Like that, I don't really need a wood chipper. I happen to get it for free. It's, it's all together though. Maybe I'll get a job destroying data tapes for a, a company or something like that. Maybe that'd be fun. But for some of these things, I, I have a nice little collection of stuff restored. I have some fun goodies to make this building fully off-grid. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy about that. Well, that's pretty much that. I really like this uh, control board. It really appeals to me. This would be good for like a boat or something like that. I'm sorry I can't really put much time towards this. It's 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 going to be rainy weather next week. I want to focus on this again. This will be in future videos, and uh, by the time we'll get there, uh, we'll get enough out of this. I think that worked out pretty well because you know I I I bust my butt trying to make enough money to buy anything like this and that's why it's like well I'm not going to spend any money on this stuff I'm going to wait for it to trickle into me because then I can I can focus my time on saving stuff from the trash and uh, that's how I can just you know give away box fans for people that need them and uh, or sell them for super super cheap or I have a habit of collecting antiques for myself Antique televisions. I got another antique television coming. Antique refrigerators. I got another antique refrigerator coming. And uh, we're going to have a shop fridge pretty soon. Just in time for the heat of summer. It's a 1935 General Electric monitor top. And it's mostly fully restored. The person just needs to get rid of it. And they live like five buildings down. So I can't say no. Well, hope you guys enjoy this video. See ya.